Hello, and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Today, I'm going to talk about why XRP swing traders, or swing traders in general that trade XRP, should actually love whales, bears, riddlers, and other and other people like that. Because they're the how you make profit off of people who actually believe in that stuff. Now, the way to make money is not to actually believe in any of that crap. That crap is absolutely ridiculous, but it fools suckers into buying at times and then it tells you the points where you should sell. Because if you think about it, it actually kind of works in psychology. There's a bunch of noobs investing in cryptocurrency, especially like, you know, um, in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, XRP and others. And, you know, XRP is very good to swing trade in and out of because, you know, it's it, they actually have a product and they're not going to go to zero. Um, and they're actually fairly predictable. And they're predict predictable because of these bears, riddlers, and all this hype, because you know that the hype is pretty much not real, and it will retrace every time they hype it up. Now, we can see this going into last year. Now, I didn't really catch on at the X Rapid uh, launch, which was the biggest spike, because that was kind of new then. I thought X Rapid was actually going to push the price up, um, and it was going to stay there. Of course, it didn't, but uh, it did result in a big spike. Should have swapped out and in then, but I was just getting really started then, and... Uh, was too afraid to actually swap out after the X-Rapid announcement. But afterwards, in November and December, you could definitely see the whale, bear, riddler crap in action. And the, the way to make money off of that was to sell out and buy back in. It was not to listen to the hype artists who proposed that it would go to $589 or $50. That obviously never happened because it's all bull crap. But they did give you signals. They did actually give you signals when to actually sell. Not when to buy, but when to actually sell. So if you remember back in November on the 5th, there was an increase in price leading up to the 5th because that was supposed to be Independence Day. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, on the 5th. And then after the 5th, it started, slow started slowly going down until the week of the 19th, which was the other big prophecy. And of course, we all know that just hours before the 19th, they basic the whales basically sold off and XRP dropped by 10 cents within the span of a few minutes because I was actually watching it then. And then it didn't really pick up um, after the 19th. So the whales, bam, they like took advantage of the noobs and uh, naive people there, made a bunch of money by pumping it up uh, via like all these riddlers and like, you know, profits and stuff. And then they, bam, they sold it, sold and uh, made a lot of money off the suckers. And if you were, re if you were really watching it, then you should have sold at the top as well, um, at the top of the 19th, at least sold part of your swing stack or sold your swing stack. Now what I would recommend do is if you actually hold XRP is that you'd separate it out into maybe like 70% long holding stack, 30% swing stack. And uh, at those moments when you know that the news is coming up, you sell the swing stack when very extremely unlikely near impossible things uh, that are predicted are supposed to happen. Obviously they have like a, almost a 0% chance of actually happening. You basically sell at that point and then you buy in after it happened because you would have gained 25% right then and there um, had you have done that. Sold um, on the very last moments of the day of the 18th and then bought in sometime on the 19th. Now, XRP's ratio started going up because of Binance rumors. Those actually turned out to be true and there was some chance there. But we all know that a lot of what was floating it was 589 end of the year, which was obviously, you know, bearable guy's prediction, which turned out to be bullcrap because it ended up being like, you know, 40 cents at the end of the year. I forgot exactly what the price was at the end of the year, but it's pretty close to 40 cents, I believe. And after the after December, what happened? Bam, you guessed it, six months of solid retrace where the um, ratio almost cut into a third by now. So had you sold your XRP um, on New Year's Day, sold your XRP into Bitcoin, not into fiat, you wouldn't have made anything selling the fiat because the entire market's actually grown several times over because of Bitcoin. Had you sold your XRP into Bitcoin on New Year's Day and bought back in right now, you would have nearly three times as much XRP as you did then. I've actually significantly increased my XRP stack, not by three times because I didn't stay out the entire time. I just kept going in and buy, uh, coming back out. But I have significantly increased my stack by 40, 50% at least. And I'm still out right now. I'm waiting for an even a better chance to buy in as soon as I swing another one of my cryptocurrencies uh, back into XRP because the XRP ratio has fallen uh, significantly since I actually sold out last time, like a couple, of, like two months ago, I believe, a little less than two months ago. So 
Since the new year, XRP ratio has fallen nearly to a third of what it was. It was at 10,000. Now it's at like 3,400, 3,500, and you would have three times as much XRP. Now there are events like Coinbase and that one thing in May, but that thing in May actually had to do with bearable guy too. Because remember his little crappy picture of the sun shining in May? Well, you know, something actually happened in the second week of May. Actually, nothing actually happened in the second week of May. Um, it was just like a whale pump. Uh, the second week of May, bam, it went up like 25%. I think people started, like some of the suckers started FOMOing, FOMOing in because like, oh my gosh, it's going to like $10 or whatever. Yeah, bull crap. It didn't go anywhere. Um, so at that point, people started FOMOing in and then there was a slow bleed out. Of course, people are going to hold on and the whales just fished that for all it was worth. And now um, it's rocketed up to around 5,700 Satoshis. But after two months more, now it's back at 3,400 Satoshis. Now, I actually sold out around 4,600. And people were like, well, you missed out. Um, you missed out on the big gains to 5,700. Well, that is true. Those same people who were saying that are the ones that actually held on too. And they held on all the way down to 3,400. So now I'm actually doing significantly better than they are um, going to. Uh, I'm doing significantly better than they are. Now, uh, since I actually sold back into Bitcoin at around 4,600, now it's around 3,400. So I'm about 20% up. Unfortunately, I didn't actually keep that in Bitcoin. I swung traded it out into other coins, which have dropped some. I think overall they've dropped slightly less than XRP. So I'm still up on them. And I'm waiting for them to pump up where I will buy, buy back into XRP at perhaps close to 50% more than what I sold out at. So that's actually what I'm waiting for. A lot of that actually sold into LTC, but I didn't buy LTC until later. A little bit of a bad decision by me right there uh, with Litecoin, but still better than if I had just stayed in XRP uh, overall that time. That's the risk you always take if you swing trade out of one coin into another. That's not Bitcoin. If you want to do the safe way, you just swing trade back into Bitcoin and wait until XRP drops more to buy back in. Remember, you still have your 70% over here. So just in case that it does skyrocket, um, you still are making money off the 70% over here. But the 30% that you have here, you could have easily doubled since the beginning of the year just by not really even looking at spikes, but looking at listening to bearable guy and basically doing the exact opposite of what he says he does. You know, when, when you know he says like something bull crap about, oh, May is the sunshine month or whatever, and it's going to rise, when it actually starts rising, you sell right there because you know that is a whale play because there was really nothing significant in May and, um, that would actually mandate that kind of a pump. Um, and after a while, it just died because... It was a pump and then it dumped again in terms of Satoshi ratio. And you know what I actually expect, like the bearable guy and maybe even some of these profits is they either are whales themselves, not the YouTube guys. They're probably not whales. They're just like suckers that are making money parroting off the bearable guy meme and well, not the meme, but the bearable guy stuff. But bearable guy himself is either one of those is either a whale himself or he's a scumbag working with whales trying to actually screw the rest of the populace because for some reason they believe that a cartoon bear has some kind of relevance in uh, XRP in uh, as an insider in the Ripple ecosystem. He's probably, he might be a scumbag working with the whales trying to screw innocent investors that are gullible enough to believe his nonsense or to follow his trading signals because they've been pretty disastrous if you've actually followed them because you would have bought during the during the rises in price, you would have believed him. You would have believed it's going to skyrocket. You would have bought in at a premium price. And then once it dumped 20, 30, 40%, you would have been stuck with it. Whether if you, whereas if you just waited, you know, maybe like two, three weeks, four weeks, it would have dumped back to its original Bitcoin value. So if you're buying back in uh, with Bitcoin, if you were actually buying back in with Bitcoin, you could have gotten a lot more XRP. So they're just playing investors uh they're scumbags they're just playing invest the these the bearable guys and the riddlers they're just scumbags they're just playing with investors they're using pawns in the social media community to get their message across to sucker in uh, gullible investors and then they're just screwing them and giving them the axe so if you want to make money off of these uh off of uh swing trading don't actually listen to uh when they're telling you to buy when they actually hype up an event and you see a pump on that event, you immediately sell off and then you buy back in when it retraces because it inevitably retraces. Just like today, there was a fit, there was a tweet about an MX, an old MX blog post. The MX blog post was actually in September, but some dude actually found it, posted a big deal on Twitter, made a big deal on Twitter, and almost immediately XRP actually went up by two cents. It's now since retraced halfway. Now that dude, I don't think that Twitter post actually um 
got XRP to increase by two cents. It's almost, the timing's almost exact, but I'm guessing is the whales actually, some of the whales actually timed it exactly to when he actually released his Twitter account. And when he actually did that, they started pumping it a bit and then everyone followed in and got led to the slaughter. Now, thankfully it was only like two, 3% retrace afterwards because it wasn't that big of a pump. I think some people are actually catching on. They're getting smart and they're, they're not really believing in this stuff. They're actually checking the dates of the blog post of Amex and they realized they didn't just post it today. It was like, you know, six months ago or something, or actually more than six months ago. It was last September, nearly a year ago. But you can just see like how some of these social influencers might actually be working with whales against your best interest rather than actually, um, you know, trying to actually help the community because this hype is not helping investors. It's making them buy up on these, um, it's making them buy up on these, uh, on these pumps and then dumping right afterwards. So while, while I don't think the people that the YouTubers are guilty themselves, like these guys feeding them the information like bearable guy, ripple Riddler, I think they might be scammy people who are actually working with the whales to screw the regular investor. You got to watch out for them. And then you got to reuse the reverse logic. And actually at the time that these point, they point these events, if you see a sudden spike, got to sell right there because you know that Basically, the hype isn't going to materialize. People are going to get upset and they're going to dump back down. And that's when you can buy. Um, that's actually when you can cash in and increase your position. So that is the video for today. Let me know what you think in the description. Thank you and have a nice day.